hello. My name is uh, Jean-Marc de Wilde. Um, thank you for being here so numerous. Today I will give you a presentation which will show you how simulation can be used in electroplating and how it can save time and cost. So in this presentation I will start with giving some information about the company Elsica. I will uh, then explain about the simulation technology and how this simulation technology can be applied to a decorative plating process of door handles. I don't think we will have time enough to go into the theoretical background, but uh, we all invite you to our booth afterwards if you would like to have more information on this subject. So let us start with introducing our company. Elsica is a Belgian company. It was founded in 1997. It is actually of the University of Brussels and the von Karman Institute, which is known worldwide for fluid flow modeling. Uh, if you wonder, the name ELSICA stands for Electrochemical Systems Calculations. ELSICA, since its development, has started with building a technology that allows to simulate and optimize electrochemical processes as they can be found in a variety of industries like aerospace, automotive, electronics, oil and gas, etc. What we offer today is engineering service based on this technology that we have developed as well as the skills and the experience of our engineering staff and our PhD doctors. So this uh, simulation technology it can be used in a variety of applications as I explained. One example of decorative electroplating can be found here in the chroming of bathroom taps. Another example is chroming of wheel covers and other automobile parts. There are also examples that can be found in the functional electroplating, which is, for example, the chrome plating, hard chrome plating or cadmium plating of landing gears, and the platinum plating, a very expensive metal, uh, platinum plating of the blades on an aero engine. Other examples are anodizing of aluminum and electrocoloring. There is electroforming and electrowinning. And then you have the opposite of putting metal on a substrate, namely taking metal away, which can be found in electrochemical machining, for example of engine cylinders, electrochemical etching and electropolishing, which has a big application in the medical world for stents and injection needles. A totally different industry, which is also governed by the same electrochemical process, is what we call cathodic protection which is actually the protection against electrochemical corrosion of pipelines and on and offshore structures like oil platforms, ships, harbors, docks, etc. I'd like to end with giving you a number of uh, references that we have already built up. Uh, you can see that the references are based mainly in Europe and uh, North America. But it's important for us to show that these are very much leading players in their own world. We're talking here about companies like Suez, ArcelorMittal, Philips, General Motors, Lufthansa Technik, EADS, etc. So now that I have explained you a little bit about our company, I would like to explain again in short details what our simulation technology consists of. And first of all, I think it's important to understand why it's only up till now that companies come with simulation products for electroplating or electrochemical processes. The fact is that modeling an electrochemical process is very, very much complicated. You have a complex combination of different phenomena. You have electricity, you have heat, you have fluid flow modeling, and you have the chemistry. Secondly, you have a very complicated behavior at the electrodes, at the anode and the cathode, there are certain reactions that are happening which are complicated and which, which need to be analyzed. And thirdly, looking at the electrochemical process itself, the part that you want to plate can be very complex, from miniature components in watches to very big components like the landing gear of an aircraft. Sometimes they put one single part in an electroplating tank, Sometimes they put a variety of different parts or many parts, uh, many same parts on one single rack. Uh, 
for cathodic protection, you're talking about pipeline networks that go from one kilometer to thousands of kilometers. And for a number of applications like electrochemical machining, you're talking a process where the part itself is moving during the electrochemical machining. So all of this combination shows that electrochemical process simulation is actually a very, very much complicated uh, phenomenon. So how does this technology work? Well, if we describe it in simple terms, the first thing we do is we represent this electrochemical process in a computer-based model. The second thing is we will solve the equations that govern the electrochemical process. And this will result in descriptions of how the layer thickness is distributed over the part and how the current is distributed in the electrolyte as well as on the parts itself. And from those results we can then start to optimize the process by, for example, reconfiguring the parts on a rack which we will show in the later example, and also by putting in certain tooling like auxiliary tooling, auxiliary anodes, shielding, current rubbers, etc. Now many people ask us how difficult it is to provide all the input data for doing such a simulation. Well, it's actually astoundingly simple. The first thing that we need to do is we need to characterize the electrolytes because many different processes have different electrolytes. What we typically will require is a couple of liters of your electrolytes and we can analyze these in uh, Elsica in our laboratories. The second thing we need is to model the infrastructure. And you see examples here of the plating tank. We need to know what the dimensions are, how many anodes there are and where they are located. Then the third, oops, my apologies. The third thing you need is you need to have certain process parameters, like what is the voltage or the current that you are imposing, how many different plating steps are there, and what are the plating times. And then finally, also very important, is of course the actual part itself that you would like to plate, where we also need the CAD information. So basically, when we have all of these informations, we will assemble that into one single computer model and then we will use our own proprietary meshing and solving tools uh, in order to um, solve the equations that govern the electrochemical process. And the result can then be shown in these parts. You will see color plots of how the layer thickness is distributed, ranging from minimum thickness to maximum thickness, and also examples of how the current is distributed on the part itself, as well as in the electrolyte. And then the final question that many customers ask us is, how accurate is such a simulation? Well, I think we're, we can be proud to say that it took years of development and improving the software, but now we reach accuracy levels of over 90% for a typical copper, nickel, chrome plating process. When we talk about chrome, sometimes there is gas evolution, which can lead to somewhat less accuracy, but in most cases, in 80% of all cases, the gas evolution is not an issue, and we again have higher than 90% accuracy. So I think it's fair to say that what we simulate is a very accurate representation of what is happening in reality in the plating tanks. So let us now see how this process actually can be applied to an industrial process, which is the decorative plating of door handles. Elsica had a customer which came to us at a certain moment in time because they had a very high fallout rate, very high scrap rate of door handles that were plated. They came to us and they wanted us to reduce the scrap rates and also to be sure that we maximize the number of parts that could be plated in one go. The third uh, objective they had for us is they wanted to uh, give us one single design of a rack which could be used for all 10 different families. So overall we needed to design one rack that could house all different families and this rack had to make sure that there was as least scrap as possible and as high number of parts as possible on the rack. Uh, 